So I just want to get a few more wee thoughts. You know, just a few key words jumped out. Again, with the Great Awakening, we're talking about awakening, right? What are you awakening from? Sleep. You know, the church has been asleep for too long. We've been slumbering. Jesus is waking us up. Humanity's been asleep. Asleep to all the evils going on in the world. Remember the Bible says that Satan is the God liturgy of this world. Jesus said that in this world you will have trials and tribulations, but be able to achieve I've overcome the world. And that's what happened. You know, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty and powerful in God. For they're pulling down on the enemy's strongholds. You know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers seated in the heavenly places that seek to exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And that's what they're doing. It's spiritual warfare, folks. And we've been given all the weapons that we need. We've been given the armor that we need. Time to take back from the enemy what he's stolen from us. Time to put on our, our armor. It's time to fight. Time to stand up and be warriors. Amen. But think about this again, right? But once you were darkness, but now you're light. We're talking about from dark to light. That's the whole thing about your awakening. From dark to light. That's it. You were once dark, now you're in light. Walk as children of light. The spirit of spirit and all goodness, righteousness and truth. Wow. You know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. He said, no one comes to the Father except for him. He's the only way, the only way to the Father. Think about it. The way, the truth and the light. You know, the whole great waking, people that embrace it are called truthers. They're spreading truth. Do you think it's a coincidence that Trump's social media platform is called Truth Social? It's focusing on truth. What does the enemy have? Oh, yes, it's lies. I mean, it just has lies and deception. Remember, the Bible says that Satan comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's what he's doing. He's deceiving. He poses as an angel of light. All he does is seeks to kill and destroy. He rolls around like a prowling lion. So, he prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking those whom he may devour. He can't devour you. If you're a believer, he can't devour you. You know, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and earth is beginning to me. I give to you. No, you go there for you. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Wow, that's powerful. You get to resist the devil. He must flee from you. It doesn't say, oh, he'll consider it. Oh, man, that's a possibility. It said, he must flee from you. Why? Because Jesus gave you authority. Now, you remember the things you saw Jesus did? Oh, I see what he did. He did miracles. Fed 5,000 people. Fed another 3,000. He walked on water. He raised the dead. He healed people. Cast out uh, demons. And he said, hey, that's the things I did. You do that too. And even greater things than that. Wow. Really? That's the greater things than that. As we said, it's a promise. Time for us as Christians to lay hold of the promises of God. Say, so who am I in Christ? Well, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. It's a promise for you, for me. For all of us that are born again. It says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. You know, as believers, we should have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. We're supposed to come out of the world. It says, be in the world, but not of the world. No more going to drunken parties. No more sleeping around. No more living in sin, folks. It says in the Bible, be holy as I am holy. It's true. It does. It's Christians can't just say, well, well, I'm saved by grace, not by works, for a sinner man should be. Yeah, it does say that. But still, be holy as I am holy. What did Paul say? Well, because of grace, should I just sin all the more? Like, grace abound even more? No. It's not an excuse to sin. See, when you sin, you give Satan an inward into your life. Because you're giving them permission to say, ah, oh, okay, fine, no, they're living in sin. And he's the accuser of the brothers. And he said, the accuser of the brothers has been hurled down forever. Nah. We've got to say, do you know what? I've been set apart. Got to live differently. I'm supposed to be light in the world. Salt in the earth. Light in the darkness. Powerful. Remember verse 14 says, therefore, he says, awake. The great awakening. Awake. You who sleep. Time to wake up, folks. No more sleeping. No more nodding off. No more. Doesn't it bother me? I just put my head in the sand like an ostrich. No, wake up. Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead. In Christ will give you light. Oh, that's brilliant. I love it. I love it. Love you, folks. Be blessed. We'll make a difference. What's the Great Commission? Go into all the world, preach the good news of the gospel, amen? Make disciples of all nations. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get back to the Great Commission. Stop playing church unity. Church, being a Christian is not about going to church on a Sunday and just warming up a plank of wood for an hour, or an hour and a half. It's not. 
Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How are you transformed inside by renewing your mind, yes? Read the Word of God. Meditate. Test everything by the Word of God. Meditate in the Word of God day and night. Be transformed. The Word of God changes you. I want to make a challenge to you. So faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So I'm going to challenge you. You know, you'll get YouTube. You've got other platforms out there. You can listen to the Bible. Easy. Just put it. Look up a Bible, a book in the Bible. For example, book of Matthew, one of the Gospels, or one of the letters of Paul, like Corinthians or Galatians or Ephesians. Every day, put on a book of the Bible. Play it. Play it while you work. Play it while you sleep. Play it when you wake up in the morning. Play it when you're working out your exercises at the gym. And I ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Say, God, bring your word alive to me. Make it alive to me. Speak to me through your Holy Spirit, through your word. And he will. Things just jump out, you get so excited. You're like, oh, this is awesome! This is brilliant! This is fantastic! You don't see. You will see your faith grow in leaps and bounds. In leaps and bounds, I promise you. How do I know this? I know it from experience, first hand experience. The Bible's alive, it's sharper than a double edged sword. The Bible says that God's word does not return to him void. He's not man that he should lie. Pray a book of the Bible each day, just listen to it. You're going to love it. You're going to... You know, here's the thing, right? It's great to listen to preachers. It's great to listen to teachers. It really is. It's great to go to church and listen to sermons and evangelists and that. But there's no greater thing than the Word of God itself. See, when you when you read the Bible, read a whole book at a time, don't just flit around from verse to verse all the time. It's a place for that. But, you know, good to listen to a whole book in its context. Sometimes if you don't see things in context, you can miss things. You can misunderstand things too. Just so it's really good, really, really, really good to to listen to, to whole chapters, whole books at a time if you can. Oh, you're gonna be blessed. You're gonna be blessed. Make that chance for yourself. Set a chance for yourself this year. Say, you know what? I wanna grow in my faith. I wanna to listen to the word of God. I want my faith to increase. Oh, I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna read it. When you do that, you can rightly divide the word of truth. The Bible says, do not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. When we, when we don't know the word of God, it's easy to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Jesus warned us. He said, do you know what? He said, do you know, it's going to be lots of false teachers, false prophets. And we see that in today's society. He said, beware the traditions and the doctrines of man lest they ensnare you. What does it mean to be ensnared? It means to be trapped. You mean you're stuck in traditions and doctrines of man to no avail. They're not even biblical. That's why we need to test everything by the word of God. It's so important you grab a Bible and read it for yourself. Because sometimes you may have somebody well-meaning deceive you. Maybe sometimes somebody's deceived doesn't know they're deceived and they're deceiving others. Blind leading the blind. But they don't realise it. Why? Because they don't know the, what the Word of God is, what it says. So we are so blessed in our day and age to be able to have a Bible, to be able to listen to it online as well. I encourage you, humble yourself before God and say, God, I'm yours. I want to live for you now. The most important decision you ever make in your life, believe it or not, is not getting married. It's not what college you go to. What car are you going to buy? The first house you're going to buy? The most important decision you ever make in your life is accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The worst decision, choice you could ever make in your life is to reject that. The Bible says that it's pointed unto man once to die and then judgment day. We all live. Someday we're going to die. Or be raptured if that comes first. And judgment day. When we stand before God on judgment day, it's too late to, to, to change our minds. Oh, whoa, 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 this is real. Oh, um, you know, I repent now. By that time, it's too late. You've made a decision. Is your name written in that land's book of life? On judgment day, when that book is opened up, will your name be there? Well, Jesus be to look in there and say, okay, let's see. Oh. No, no, I can't see it. Uh, oh, not there, sorry. Tough luck. Sorry, can't let you in. Oh, it'll be. Oh, yep, see it, right here. Oh, fantastic. 
But Jesus be able to say to you, Ah, you made it, you made it. Oh, brilliant. I've been looking forward to seeing you. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Give me a big hug. Oh, big hug. Oh, well done, my good and faithful servant. Or will he say, Sorry, depart from me. I never knew you. You know, Bible and Revelations, it says, I would rather you're hot or cold because I would spew out the lukewarm. Chance all Christians, all believers, don't be lukewarm. Time to get hot, get on fire for Jesus. Get back to fulfilling the Great Commission. Jesus did not come down to earth a couple of thousand years ago and die that horrible, brutal death for us to play church charity, to play church. No. We're supposed to make a difference in this world. Do you know our life here on earth? It's temporary. It is. It's nothing in comparison to eternity. You know, we're all born eternal beings. We're going to live for eternity. The only question is destination. That's it. Based on the decision that you make with what Jesus did for you will determine your destination. One or two choices, one or two places, heaven or hell. Now, there's people out there who say, oh, there's no such place as hell. God loves everybody. He wouldn't send a good God wouldn't send anybody to hell. You send yourself there. When you refuse to accept the free gift, I mean, put it this way God made it so easy. He could not make it easier for you. You cannot earn your way into heaven. You cannot buy your way into heaven. You don't have to be a, a trillionaire, a billionaire, a zillionaire. A millionaire to get you into heaven? Nope. It's a free gift. <laughs> I think God has a bit of a Scottish streak in him because he loves free stuff. You know, as Scots, we love free. It's a free gift. He just offers it to you. And you just have to receive it. Oh, I'll take that. I want that for myself. What are you going to do, folks? If you've not already made that decision, it's the most important decision you ever, ever, ever make in your life. I encourage you to make it. Seek God while he may yet be found. Because the day will come. You don't know when your time's up. You really don't. You know what? I could walk out here today. I could get in a car crash and I'll be home. Boom. That's it. Done. Judgment day. I might live for a year. I might live for ten years. I don't know. But no one knows. Rapture could come. Could come in the middle of the night. We don't know. We don't know when it is. That's why we need to always be ready. Always be ready. Don't put it off, folks. Don't put off the most important decision ever. Don't think, ah, oh, well, when I get old, when I get to 90, then I'll make a decision. No. Make a decision now. Love you, folks. Be blessed. Enjoy the rest of your day. Happy Sunday.